Uh, hey, Aaron. Yeah, what's up, Bree? There's a strange guy in our podcast right now. <laughs> oh my god, it's Kyle! <laughs> oh, so so this is the Kyle? This is the Kyle. The, the number Kyle one fan, Kyle. Kyle? The king of Kyles. That's right. Man, well, Kyle, welcome to Imaginary Friends, the podcast. Happy to be here. everyone welcome to imaginary friends the podcast and like we said earlier we have a fantastic episode for you because our number one fan kyle is here and we're going to interview him find out what makes kyle kyle what led him on his journey in life towards our podcast and his fandom of it no just kidding really it's just gonna be about kyle but um before we get to that Let's talk a little bit about D&D. And uh, there isn't anything. We didn't really do much. Bree uh, helped some of our players set up for her new campaign. And yeah, I don't know what we're doing this week. I'm not I, exactly sure. Any ideas, Bree? Oh, I have no clue. I have no clue. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm, hoping, I'm hoping we're going to be uh, continuing with the We're Not Evil campaign. I'm yeah. very excited to kill some things. Yeah, dungeon yeah, time. Happens. Yeah, okay. So, Tune in yeah. next week to find out whether or not we played. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know you're all waiting, waiting anxiously. Okay, so let's move on to the main event, the Kyle interview. Ah. Kyle, how are you doing today? I am doing well. Oh, good. That's good. I'm glad. Um, thank you so much for coming on to our podcast and letting us interview you. It's really kind. And thank you for being our number one fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And emailing us. <laughs> our one and only email. <laughs> Enjoyable content. Every Wednesday, got to look forward to it. Aw. That's super nice. So I'm going to give everyone a little bit of history. Um, Kyle has been friends with my husband, John since they were kids. What grade was it? Kindergarten or grade one you guys have known each other for? Uh, I'm going to say kindergarten grade one um, is a fair sort of, yeah, we'll go kindergarten. <laughs> it was a grade three. I remember specifically a story with your husband, John. He took care of me when I had broken wrists because my parents were in the process of moving. Aww. So quite a long time, quite a long time. He's a good guy. Um, and Kyle and John have three other friends that also, um, they've been friends since then. They all grew up on the same street for a bit, right? Pretty close. Um, all in the same sort of community, some on the same street. I think it was, uh, outdoor soccer and Cubs that really brought us together as well as going to school together. Yeah, that's cool. You know, it's amazing to me because I moved around so much as a kid, so I have no friends like that. Like, my longest friendship is someone I met when I was, like, 17. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have anything like that. I think that's really cool. That's something I'd like for my kids, for sure. Yeah, ours, too. I got two daughters. That would be awesome for the... It's kind of weird. One of them's in grade one now, and I'm seeing the friends that she's gravitating towards, and are those going to be lifelong friends, or are those going <laughs> to be lifelong friends? It's kind of a weird question to ask yourself. <laughs> is her husband going to interview uh her friend later in life on her podcast <laughs> i guess i don't know you guys are special the five of you <laughs> it's true special absolutely support. it's true no like in a good way special you know yeah. so, You're the, um, it's sorry. the friendship that that you know uh people write about you know when you have yeah. like that stand by me kids on bikes kind of friendship like stranger mm. things Sisterhood of the traveling pants. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, those are uh, high things to hold uh, compared to. Uh, <laughs> like we all all grew up in Calgary, uh, even though there were some years that one or two might have moved away for a little bit. They were always friendships that, no matter where either one was at in their walk in life, you could just sort of, if you were to connect, it was 
picking up where you left off. So there was no stress. There was no pressure. There was no expectations. It was just hanging out. Aw, see, that's fantastic. I think that you're super lucky. I can't, like, having a friend like that at all is amazing. And you've had four of them for most of your life. It's pretty cool. <laughs> hey? What's really fun to watch is the, those that have kids right now, seeing sort of the different stages that each per, each group or couple is going through. And like, oh, man, we're reliving some of our uh, childhood through our children totally vicariously. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, yeah, it's, it is fun to look at the different stages. That's true. That's true. You're right. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, could you tell all the fine folks at home about some of your interests? Since mostly, you know, we talk about interests and creative interests, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Interests. All right. Um, definitely. Uh, my profession, I'm a high school teacher. And I, I came to that profession kind of, I wouldn't say late in life, but it wasn't the first career choice. Mm -hmm. I first went into um, sports medicine rehabilitation and thought that healthcare and uh, health and wellness industries were as, uh, where I was going to end up. Um, different choices and uh, challenges within that kind of pushed me back towards education. I've always been kind of invested in, in youth and kids and like whatever those uh, may have been in the classroom or even beforehand uh, helping with swimming lessons, things like that. I think that was always an interest. Um, it's well, well, I think it was one of my first jobs besides a paper route was uh, teaching kids swimming lessons at the old, I think it's the Trico center now, but it used to be the family leisure center mm -hmm. back in by fish Creek library. Yeah. It, that was always a constant uh, sort of being involved in fitness, but also being involved in kids and community. Cause um, you were a lifeguard. Yeah, and it, when I turned 18, was able to continue the, the swimming career, as it were. I got my NLS and started lifeguarding at the Talisman Center, but was used to be Lindsay Park. I guess now it's the Repsol Center. It keeps changing names. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're right. And then I worked for the uh, city of Calgary for a bit, worked up at Village Square. So, yeah, it's that was always a kind of a constant through the education process. Wow. Yeah. Great. So you'd also talk about creativity. Um, I remember, I think I was 13, maybe 13, 15. My sisters were always involved in the Young Canadians in one capacity or another. I have these younger sisters. And I, I had never sort of gravitated towards performing arts, anything like that initially. But after sort of seeing them perform and uh, do some of the fun stuff involved in the Stampede, this huge annual spectacle in Calgary, that was something that I, after um, after grade nine, yeah, I kind of got involved with and started to really take an appreciation for acting, singing, dance, and all the all the gambit of that. So here I am doing health and wellness stuff, kind of figuring out where I'm going to end up through the entire high school experience. <laughs> I get I get thrown into the Young Canadians through my high school years, and that sort of also became like a a second school experience. Sorry, um, can you um, explain what Young Canadians are? Yeah, the Young Canadians are performing um, singing, dancing ensemble that put on the uh, grandstand show for the Stampede ten nights of the year. But and you were part of that. I was a part of that. I was yeah, one of the that's amazing. cast. But the really interesting thing about it, it's not just a bunch of uh, talented kids that are put together for the show. They get an entire scholarship year worth of training at the Young Canadian School of Performing Arts. So. Oh, cool. So you go to your normal school during the day and then in the evenings and weekends you get to go take classes at this facility down on Stampede Park. And I always kind of compared it to the movie Fame. If you guys had ever seen that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The school of just a whole bunch of artistic kids that they're going to make it and somehow it, that was, I don't know, Calgary's cowboy version of that. <laughs> <laughs> so you were, you were kind of on two paths at once. Absolutely. I definitely yeah. feel, I still feel that sort of pull back and forth. If you can't really spend too much time in one, cause then you forget about the other, or maybe you, whatever reason you can't make a living in one, you go to the other as well. <laughs> right. And then you were like, I'm going to go work on a cruise ship. Yeah. Speaking of <laughs> career change. So I ended up uh, finishing my first degree in kinesiology, got some employment at um, Panther sports medicine, which was like back in 2008 when we started to go through one of our mini recessions in Calgary and I was part of a clinic, got laid off, 
and wasn't really sure what plan B was, or even if there was a way to continue with plan A. And my dad, I still had a bunch of um, footage from my time with the young Canadians. He put together an audition reel and sent it off to a cruise ship. And they Your said, dad they, did that for you? my dad did that for me. Like I asked my dad, like, what do I do? Healthcare or health and wellness is what I want to do. It's like, okay, here's what you do take a piece of paper and reverse chronological order, look at and list your last sets of accomplishments, whether that was big or small, and sort of look at that and pick at which ones you'd like to try to do more of. So that's where the cruise ship conversation came out of. And I'm like, I'd like to keep performing. I'd like to try to keep doing something. And then he made the reel and sent it off. <laughs> and then I, I had no choice. I just had to say yes or no, am I going to LA or not? Um, right. And you went? But it, it, it was a good strategy. And I haven't done it in a while. <laughs> Should probably do it in a while now that I have two daughters and five years or five or six years sunk into a career, I'm trying to get excited for the next, whatever next chapter looks like. But it, good exercise, reverse chronological tracking of your life. Oh my God. I think I, I don't know what I even put. <laughs> I might actually get depressed if I do that. Well, oh. part of it is, but that was, it was to pull me out of the depression that I was in. It was do this and start looking at the milestones and the highlights and what do you want to do more of and what have you not done yet? Right. So it was not a point to get depressed, but a point to sort of get re-inspired. I remember when you were gone for that bit. That was a while. It was when you and John got married. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what did you do on the cruise ship? I, I learned. So first it was a 10 month contract spent one month in Los Angeles to learn four production shows. So we had, yeah, it was a month. We learned a show a week and they're 90 minute shows. <laughs> so you're involved in more or less, I want to say at least half or yeah, yeah, I was on stage for about half of those 90 minutes, everything off stage with either quick changing or supporting and doing other stuff like that. But the goal was when you're put on the ship, you know, these four production shows with your cast, and every night of the, I think we were doing Alaska first, and then we did a Mexican Riviera cruise. There are seven day cruises, but of the six day of the seven days, four nights were production shows. Whoa. Can you tell was, me some of the productions, like the names of some of them? <laughs> yeah. Um, there was one called, uh, so you thinking, so you thinking contents that like featured different dance forms like Irish step, uh, swing. <laughs> nice. um, what else did I have in that dance? I don't I don't, whatever. That was a fun one. There was one that was, I got the music in me. It was a tribute to some of the great um, singers like Barbara Streisand. That was more mm -hmm. of a feature of the, the lead singers that were involved on the ship. The other two shows, there was one that was like a spy show, tributes to James Bond and um, man, I can't remember some of the other stuff, but it was Vicky, awesome. Vicky and Effects. And the best show, the favorite, all-time favorite, had been running for quite a long time. It was called Piano Man. It had Elton John. It had Billy Joel. It had Liberace. It was a, it was a very fun show. <laughs> very hard show, but very fun. So you were like a, a dancer part of it? Yeah. One Did of the entertainers. Sing? Did you sing it all? Uh, since we weren't the main singing headliners... We sang, but we were never mic'd. So there were four lead singers, and then the rest of the cast was like the dancing core. So we would sing, but we weren't mic'd. So yes okay. and no. <laughs> what did you do for the rest of the day when you weren't performing? So we would do two shows a day. Um, and besides preparation and sort of just going over notes from previous previous cruises, trying to make sure that we're not forgetting pieces or doing something wrong or things like that, you were on the ship um, in the days that you had off that you weren't dancing or doing anything. You could pick up odd, odd jobs on the ship. I think I helped out with some of the ports and sails when they would do excursions. They uh, needed people volunteer or not volunteers, but staff to help hand out swag to, to some of the um, customers, Patri yeah, patrons and customers. So I, I would do that on some of the port days that I didn't have a show. It was oh, okay. extra money. And it was a really nice contract because all the money that I made since the room and board was covered went towards my student loans. And it was a quick way to pay off that first degree. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's right. Oh, then, 
then you were done that and you came back and then you were like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go back to school. Is that what that was? <laughs> One way or another, yeah. It was I came back, didn't know what was next if I would try to get another contract or see if I could find something in Calgary. And I ended up getting a uh, educational assistant job at Bishop Carroll. Okay. So EA. Um, basically, if, for people that aren't familiar to school, that's work at your own pace based. It's a lot of, it's not quite distance learning, but it's not your traditional classroom. So a lot of the roles of EAs are kind of like in-house tutors. So I got, I hi, got hired by the Calgary Catholic Board for that role. And I worked there for about a year and a half to two years. And I really started enjoying being back in a school atmosphere. Not, not a post-secondary atmosphere, but like a high school atmosphere. It was nice being around kids again, nice being around people that cared about learning. And I don't know, just, there was a lot of bright potential. What's next? What's after school? What's everyone's dreams that they want to achieve? And then, yeah, about 2009, 2010, I ended up applying to an ed program. And I guess the rest is more or less history. <laughs> Got married, had a kid, bought a house and started teaching almost all within one year, it seems like. But you still have that dual track going on right now, though, don't you? Because yeah. you do dance as well. I still have a foothold in uh, the Ukrainian Calgary dance community, if you want to call it that. Back in 2005, so I was still involved with the Young Canadians at the time, the um, Stampede was dedicated to the Queen's Jubilee Centennial. I think that's what it was. So they got a bunch of multicultural dancers together. One of these groups was a Ukrainian troupe that had a good friend of mine that I was going to university with at the time. And he kind of, when I left Young Canadians, recruited me to jump over to the folk dance. And I'm, I'm half Ukrainian myself, so I'm no stranger to a pierogi or to a good sabava. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a fantastic experience just sort of being welcomed to a community that I wasn't really a part of pro previous to that. So when I came back from the ship and was looking at trying to further my education, I was looking at how can I still be involved in artistic communities and the Ukrainian community was right there. <laughs> so, yeah, still involved with um, at least from a board perspective I, I sit on a volunteer board with one of the groups I don't dance as much I still come back for like alumni stuff but it's that dual track you speak of uh, yeah. involved in school but also involved in this uh yeah does, does that sort of answer your question about that yeah for sure because I knew you were doing Ukrainian dance I've seen videos of Kyle Bree doing this and it's amazing like he's like um, he's doing it he's down playing it <laughs> It's really cool. He does this crazy, like both feet up, touch your hand kind of thing moves, man. And he, at the same time as other guys doing it, like it's really cool. <laughs> does that mean we're gonna have to post a video on our website in the show notes? Yeah, you could. Um, interestingly enough, this past weekend was supposed to be a virtual Calgary Ukrainian festival. It's been running for the last sort of, I think, ten or eleven years. This is the eleventh year of it. And since of COVID-19, they can't run it as, they, as it used to. So last weekend, they had wanted to sort of do a digital version of it. But then with all the anti-racism protests, they decided, <laughs> let's step back and let's also support our, um, our other communities out there and not try to compete for attention on those particular, or, uh, particular issues. So they're actually running this weekend. Um, I don't have the times yet but they will be live broadcast through the Facebook platform, both of the 13th and 14th of Calgary's Ukrainian festival. I'm sure they're going to use footage that I am in because yeah, I've been involved for the last 10 years. <laughs> and you're awesome. I, I try. <laughs> um, so, okay. Dance then primarily as like a, a creative thing that you're doing. Is there anything else that you do that's a hobby? I know, I remember talking to your dad. Do you remember talking about making that box thing, that box drum thing? What was that called again? Uh, oh, no. Uh, it was an upright bass. No. Yeah, that you sit on? So, yeah, this, <laughs> yeah um, I think I remember what you're talking about. It was my dad... Um, is originally from Saskatchewan, used to play in a band out there. And then mm -hmm. when he got married, moved to Calgary with, with my mom and 
had us and started a family. But music has always still been his life, even though he kind of like left the band years behind. So he loves to dabble with building instruments or refurbishing instruments. <laughs> he's, he's, taught, he's taught himself how to play banjo by buying one off like uh, Kijiji and then repairing it. No. He, you ever heard of a bazooki? No. It's a folk, an Irish folk instrument. It's kind of like a mini guitar. I think it's only three, no, it's five strings, but it's another instrument that he taught himself how to play. Uh, the instrument is called a, a badran. So That's it is, great. Yeah, it's a box that has a little resonating hole cut into it and you can, you can keep rhythm. I know that you play guitar because I've seen uh, you do it. A little bit, not as good as him, not as good as you. I don't think that's true. Um, <laughs> what about um, anything that you're looking at doing in the future? Is there a hobby or an interest or anything that you'd like to get into and try and develop? I, I, I don't know, honestly. It's with all this COVID-19, it's been that question of what can I do in my free time? And granted, there's the homeschooling and still teaching high school classes from home. I have been doing a little bit more music. Um, my daughter, we have doing a little bit of violin. So that's been fun, having her explore some of that. Yeah. And we are in also, I don't know, a constant process with my wife. We met in theater. We worked on Stampede together and, and, and our relationship got a little bit more deep after that. She worked in technical theater and loves building things whenever she has the opportunity to. So whenever I see her fiddling around with wood, I kind of want to jump in, but then she gets defensive. It's her project. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Give her the space. So I don't know about other creative. Um, I can, I have an appreciation for craftsmen. Uh, the desk that I'm on right now, this was actually made by um, a good friend of mine from the Ukrainian community. He was, he was finishing his red seal carpentry and his last project was, was this desk. So I get an appreciation for craftsmanship, but I'm always, I don't think it's something that I could, dabble in as much as say some of these other folk <laughs> that are good at it it does take time um our last episode we were talking about what happens when you get in a creative rut mm. things like that you know and one of the things was like life gets in your way and it's hard yeah no fair enough it's like how do you get out of rut like even as a writer how do you how do you push through or and I think even as a teacher right now, like not like teaching has a, l a level of creativity in it, it's, itself but without mm -hmm. being in the classroom and being sort of motivated with the push and pull of your classroom and your kids. It's really hard to say, what am I going to do until the 26th of June? The kids have been sort of exempt from their finals and over half my kids have disengaged. I want to do a creative project. I want to do like more sort of lab work with them, but it's impossible <laughs> with this distant or it's, it's difficult. I shouldn't say it's impossible. It's just the, the creative spark isn't there. Yeah. You're constantly dialoguing with them. I was just talking to a student today in one of my Zoom sessions, and we were kind of having this question of how do we go back to school in September? Like I know with phase two opening soon, it's, it's going to start, but it's mm -hmm. that motivation of students to get back up at decent times in the day to go to school. I know. It's, I don't know. That's true. I was talking, I had a, like a work meeting today and somebody asked like, are we, are we going to get like some notice? Are we going to be able to like ease into coming back to work? Cause that's going to be difficult. And someone else brought up the fact that they knew someone who was told on Thursday that they'd be back at work on Monday. You know what oh. I mean? And I was like, oh man, I know. <laughs> right. give, give me the list of yeah. 10 points I need to know about today. Jeez. <laughs> I was thinking about that too because I got used to it, you know, like, you know, I walk the dog after I'm done work. I can just do that right away or I can go and have a snack or I can go and talk to the kids. It's going to be super weird getting back to normal. Tomorrow's a new day. Like, as much as we got this fear of the unknown and the fear of the no or the, the new, there could be a lot of really cool opportunity that could be just around the corner. You got to push forward, see if it's any good, see if it's worth exploring. I don't know. That's... So, I, 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 I just, I don't know why that comment made me think of this, but did you guys know that UFOs have actually been confirmed by the Pentagon? Who told you that? What? There, it's, it's like CNN did a thing in April about it. What? <laughs> yeah, they have actually, Pentagon have actually put out a couple videos of uh, fighter pilot 
uh, cameras capturing UFOs. And the Pentagon is like, yep, these are legit. But because of everything else that's happening, it just went under the radar. Wow. <laughs> what do they look oh. like? They're just like, they're like, um, UFO. there's a like one point, but I don't know. I don't know if it was just the angle or whatever, but kind of looked like a TIE fighter, but you bet it was like this oblong shape. And they were just like, we don't know what it is. And it's straight from the Pentagon. So it's legit. Yeah. 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 What? <laughs> <laughs> So when you're just like, you don't know what's coming next, I'm like, it could be aliens, because clearly they exist now. I can't handle, no, Brie, I can't handle that. There's <laughs> been too much this year. Aliens can't be what comes next. CNN <laughs> too much. I don't know. Didn't they have we talked about this before, about uh, ref- like atmospheric reflections? Come on, Kyle, you're a science high school teacher. Isn't that <laughs> I just saw the other day SpaceX launch a rocket that took off and then landed again on Earth. That's never happened before. Oh, the, wow. like, the, the first stage went up, and normally that thing just goes off into the ocean and to get rid of it. This thing went up, came back down on reentry, and landed again. That's never happened before. Whoa, the, that's some like Star Wars, Star Trek kind of stuff. I, so I don't know what this UFO stuff is, but like there's stuff that's going on that's pushing the envelope faster and further than it ever used to go before I, i'm nervous i'm excited and i'm nervous for my <laughs> daughter's generation to get older and go i want to go to mars daddy like that's not, that could be a reality in two decades well like, if elon musk has his way we're doing that in the next 20 years so yeah so i don't i don't know it's science is there but science like is also that blind faith and wonder isn't that where creativity really comes like it's <laughs> yeah that's true that's true i think it's twelve thousand leagues under the sea uh, uh jules verne right yeah all that stuff there's some of that it's a reality now that's true some of it not so much <laughs> <laughs> like uh the guys oh maybe sort of in a way remember the part where there's the people in the underwater suits and then they're farming <laughs> underwater yep. like at the bottom of the ocean <laughs> they're called like farmland and stuff i don't know i thought that was pretty cool yeah star <laughs> trek, star trek. oh well, say I was gonna say, star trek predicted a lot of stuff too mm-hmm. yeah. facetime mm-hmm. you know if you think about this you guys you're in the 80s Someone's like, you're going to have a thing, a little flat thing, and it's going to be a computer in your hand, and you're going to be able to talk to people's faces. No, you'd be like, no, that's not going to happen, right? It's happened. It's, it's <laughs> happening now. People yeah. have been fired over FaceTime. That's exactly like Back to the Future <laughs> episode two, right? It's true. That's true. Oh, people really. have been fired over FaceTime. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't have a, uh, a Don Matrix printout that tells you you're fired. <laughs> yeah, faxes are gone. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I remember that. You're fired. And it was all big letters. Like, yeah. <laughs> they put the, that little mini pizza in that microwave thing yeah, and then it rehydrates it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I, I mean, I think. If I remember correctly, hoverboards exist. They're just not good, no. but they exist. Yeah, well, I think that was a big thing when we reached the the year that they went into the future yeah, for. And it was, ah, yeah, <laughs> where are the hoverboards? Like, well, let's go make one. Let's go make one for just that. Yeah, yeah. the fact that we can. <laughs> See that? That's what blows my mind. Is that if when you you know when we were kids and we watched Back to the Future, they were like, we're going into the future to 2015, and now that's our past, and it's so bizarre. <laughs> I know, I know, right? Yeah, because even uh, even Blade Runner was 2019. Oh man, you're right. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> just going back and rewatching classics is something that I haven't really done too much of. But uh, right now, we're reading a bunch of Roald Dahl books with uh, my daughter Lexine. We've gotten through BFG, gotten through Matilda, gotten through Fantastic Mr. Fox. They've all been made into movies. And the beauty of a lot of these movies, at least um, Fantastic Fox and uh, even James and Giant Peach, we're doing that one right now, it's all stop camera animation. Mm-hmm. Like total classics in that nostalgia of Nightmare Before Christmas style editing. Yeah. Animation. Yeah. It's kind of fun. <laughs> they never, they don't do it that often anymore though, right? Because it takes forever. 
And well, Leica, Leica Studios is really the only company that does it. Yeah, because mm. it's yeah. so much cheaper and easier to use computers, right? Yeah. And they can even take take computers and make it look like they're doing stop motion animation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But there's something about the real stuff, though. It's pretty cool. Isn't it the big love of The Mandalorian on Disney Plus? Is it, it it's pushing technology forward, but still trying to have as many practical effects as possible? Mm-hmm. And it's it's not just, oh, we're replacing the old tech with better tech. It's we are still updating this old technology to make it relevant and make it awesome. Like, that's why that series worked so well. And I like it's it's probably even even Star Wars aside, if you don't like Star Wars, it's awesome to watch and see the documentary stuff behind the scenes and how they made it happen. It's like perfect fantasy immersion, <laughs> how they're creating and telling these stories. That's true. Free. Kyle loves Star Wars a lot. I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> no, I am Kyle's number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, true. Yeah. You guys should talk about Star Wars and I'm just going to eat a sandwich. No, I'm just <laughs> I have a burger here if you want one. <laughs> you want to know the secret to the five, the friends from high school that's held us together? It's a fan- love of Star Wars. That's what's done it. <laughs> That's fair. Um. Kyle, I have a question hmm. for you before we wrap up our main portion. Sure. So, um, do you have a favorite book you would like to recommend to our listeners? So, I, I got, I don't do a lot of reading, but I love Audible. So, I do books on tape. And when I was still commuting, I liked books you could sort of pick up and uh, put down and sort of see what the next chapter or section is about. There's a book that was recommended to me uh, through another podcast called uh, How to Think by Alan Jacobs. 13 chapter book 13 chapter something like that and the very last chapter it's kind of like a checklist of things to think about when you're um i guess metacognition thinking about your thinking thinking about how am i approaching who am i talking to what things am i contributing to on social media or not contributing to how do they get tricked it was this interesting way to reflect and it, i don't read a lot of nonfiction, but it was one that sort of gave me a a kick in the butt going, Ooh, I got to sort of do a self self checklist of myself now. So oh, that's cool. That's a good one. Um, I used to read a few, um, surely you must be joking, Mr. Feynman or the wonder of finding things out. Those are other nonfictions written by the physicist, Richard Feynman. They're just hilarious because <laughs> it's anecdotes from his life, but yeah, those are, those are two fun, two or three fun titles. Thank you. That's perfect. You know, that's great because I, I rarely read nonfiction. Mm. So I have a, I just have a really hard time getting into something that doesn't have story. You know, I get, mm-hmm. I'm always like, uh, <laughs> you know? so that's great. Maybe I'll give those a shot and see how I do. Yeah. They're fun to pick up and put down. Like they're yeah. one, think of it like a chunk sized podcast. You're getting into every now yeah, and then. That's true. You're right. That's a good way of thinking about it. Um, I was brought up books because next week, Marie and I will be discussing the books we were reading. <laughs> Finally! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> finally <laughs> I don't know why that took so long. <laughs> Sorry about that. But we will be doing that. But Kyle, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast and spending time with us and letting us get to know you. That was really great. Thanks for having me. It was a, it's been good. It's enriching conversation. All right, Bree. That was a great interview. I really enjoyed myself. Yeah. Kyle is a wonderful person. Yeah. And I'm glad he's our number one fan. Yep, <laughs> me too. So let's move on to our favorite thing for this week. Would you like to go first, my friend? Sure. Um, so my favorite thing this week, uh, which I have I think I've talked about before in the 80s episode, is Bill and Ted. <laughs> yeah, Bill and Ted. Uh, so the, the, the trailer for the third movie dropped yesterday. So Bill and Ted uh, face the music. Um, and it just reminded me how much I love uh, that franchise. Uh, it's just so much fun. The same characters? Like they have. Oh, like- yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. but they age, so like they're so just mean, like, stayed the same basically through this. And then, life. yeah, that's essentially what the movie is about. So basically, you know, the whole thing was that that Wild Stallions was supposed to 
to create a song that that makes world peace but this is you know 30 years later and they're still just those two losers that play in their in their garage and they have they have their two daughters but it's them going back into the future going into the future and the future people basically like you aren't doing your job like you need to make this song that brings <laughs> peace to the world <laughs> and so it's them trying to to like go on this journey to like find figure out how to play this song uh that's supposed to oh. supposed to fix the fix the world so yeah but i just it just so it's funny because seeing that trailer just remind me how much i love the originals um and how i can like to me they're they're endlessly rewatchable um you know if you are somebody who's never seen them you might watch them and actually feel a little bit offended because they're they again they don't culturally they they don't stand the test of time because there is a lot of terminology and language that they use that are very inappropriate now right um, you, you gotta remember that when you watch it right exactly but that's the thing is is growing up in the 80s you can still enjoy it because you you recognize that that that's a time stamp that's something yeah. from you know 30 40 years ago oh, <laughs> <It's cool. old. laughs> Um, so to me going back and like, it's rewatchable because that's, that stuff, even though I, I acknowledge it, like when it comes up, I'm just like, Ooh, that's rough. Um, but it doesn't take away from my enjoyment because that's, I guess part of it is nostalgia, but I just love, I've always loved this, the characters so much because they are that typical California, like surfer dude kind of mm -hmm. a thing. Yeah. And they're bringing back death from bogus journey. So I'm really stoked. Yay. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully it's not gonna be trash, but we'll see. we'll see. I mean, again, I love Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, which not a lot of people do, so I'm pretty sure I'll still love it. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> It'll have its moments, I bet. It'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my favorite thing, uh, I decided to choose birthdays because, oh. uh, yeah, well, yesterday was Jack's birthday. He turned 11, which was pretty happy, sad for me, you know. Um, but I, I know a lot of people don't like birthdays. They, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like a, something bad happens to them on their birthday or it's a reminder of like their age and they don't like that because they feel like death is creeping closer to them every birthday. But, uh, for me, my whole life, I love birthdays, not just my birthday, even though I really love my own birthday very much. Um, but other people's birthdays, I, I just feel like. You know, we're in this big world all together, and there's so many of us. But your birthday, that's your day. Mm -hmm. The one day where it's its the day you were born, the day you went whoop out of your mama, and, <laughs> there you were, and you could start influencing your world. Do you know what I mean? That is something to celebrate. That's super important. And uh, I love them. I think however you want to celebrate them, like some people are like, you know what, I like to take my birthday and be by myself. That's mm -hmm. what I like. You know, if that's your jam, you do that. But I like to be around people that I care about. I like to um, have presents. <laughs> and it don't have to be great presents or like expensive. You know, my kids make me stuff. And each one of those is like so amazing to me that they took the time to do it. You know, and it's just, that's my special day or like yesterday this whole thing jack couldn't have a party you know but we planned out all these activities that he would want to do and he got to pick them we all played minecraft together in a new survival world and he had like restrictions on what we could do and it was really fun we all had such a good time and uh we had the food that he wanted and he loves dinosaurs and when he woke up in the morning we had decorated it all downstairs with all dinosaur stuff and we played Jurassic Park music to wake him up. He, you know, he, he had no idea what it was and he's like, what's happening? And he was so happy. I could see him, he was so happy. Aww. You know, he, um, we don't, we try to keep uh, artificial colors out of his diet because it, it affects him really badly. So it's been a hard time making him cakes because making a themed cake with no food color is really difficult. <laughs> But he said he wanted a, a worm cake, like a cake that looks like dirt. So it's like chocolate and has worms sticking out of it. But we couldn't find any 
gummy worms that didn't have artificial color, but we did find fuzzy peaches, which is something he's been missing eating. So I made a chocolate cake covered in these fuzzy peaches and Smarties. And he was so happy with this disgusting cake. <laughs> but you know what? I'm hoping he'll always look back at his 11th birthday as being really special. That's awesome. I think yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I have to say, as an adult, one of my favorite birthdays is to have a kid's birthday. So yeah. it, it's it's something, uh, I can't even remember when it was. I think it was when my brother turned 30. And we had a kid's birthday party for him. So we had, like, all the kids' games. And, and we just, <laughs> you know, like, he had a themed cake and all this kind of stuff. And it was so much fun to have this, have a bunch of adults just get together and do stupid kid stuff. And so it's almost been a, we've carried that forward for different birthdays. It's just like, you know, I don't care that I'm turning 40. I want a kid's birthday party. Like, I want... Right? streamers and I want it to be like a theme of some kind. I know. Right? <laughs> a pinata. Why yeah. do you get to have pinata? Yeah, exactly. Well that's you know, it's like, you know, as adults, we still like things like I can have a Star Wars birthday party if I want to. You know, we Ooh. threw my friend a Harry Potter birthday one year and you know it's just it's just so much fun to to enjoy your birthday because like you said, a lot of adults get to that point where they're just like oh god it's another birthday like I stopped celebrating those but you're right yeah. it's just a day all about you and that's awesome that's <laughs> my birthday is in December and December 14th so it's really close to Christmas so um as a kid it was hard because I would get uh birthday slash Christmas gifts yeah. and I had two younger sisters who <laughs> didn't know one of them has a birthday in November and I'd always be like, it's so unfair, you know, because she's like a month earlier than me. She gets yeah. two gifts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you're not supposed to be greedy, but as, kids are greedy. They just are. So yeah. I'd be like, oh, it's not fair. And I'd get birthday presents that were wrapped up in Christmas wrapping paper. And, you know, everyone's going to Christmas parties. So they, my, my birthday was always like kind of overshadowed by Christmas. Yeah. You know, and I'd be like, it's Jesus's birthday on the 25th. Okay, it's my <laughs> birthday on the 14th. <laughs> my husband's the same way. So Brennan's Brennan's birthday is actually two days after yours. And uh, so he grew up with like everything getting overshadowed. So everybody in his family always had like a big special day for their birthday, except for him. Cause they're like, whatever, it's just like, we'll just wait till Christmas. And then oh. like Christmas will be your day. Um, <gasps> and so like, he's actually, he's actually grown up hating his birthday because it's because it's they've it's always been overshadowed so he's almost gone the opposite where instead of being like no I'm gonna have my birthday damn it because it does come so close to Christmas he's just like whatever I'll just I don't care <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. I've met people who have the same it's the same thing my youngest sister I remember her she said something once that I was like that's that's good um she was tired of people like waiting for someone else to plan a party for her or mm. do so then she just started planning her own parties. She yeah. was like, I'm going to make my own cake and I'm going to do it <laughs> and I'm going to invite people and they're going to come and they're going to do all the games I planned because if I don't do it, it's not going to happen. I'll be sad. So I'm just going to plan it. And then I exactly. know it's going to happen, you yeah. know, and I feel like that too. Like with John, I tell him for my birthday, I want to go to this place for dinner. I want to play these games with the kids. I want to do this, you know, and then I knew I'm going to get exactly what I wanted, you know, and it works out. And I tell him he he only made the mistake once for my birthday when we the first year we started dating he got me an artificial Christmas tree for my birthday and I was like no <laughs> <laughs> we still have it I think every year I bring it out he's like a little ashamed when he sees it oh <laughs> never gives me Christmas wrapping paper nothing yeah. it's always like this is my birthday yeah you can find non Christmas wrapping paper. <laughs> Put in a little bit of effort, please. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? I like those. That was good. Bill and Ted's and birthdays. Right? <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> so we're going to move on now to Weekly Wisdom. Weekly Wisdom. Where we <laughs> impart something that we've learned in our life travels with you and you can choose to accept our wisdom or not that is entirely up to you Bree, what do you have this week for weekly wisdom 
my weekly wisdom is just simply listen. Um, and that's something that I've, it's definitely a learned trait just to listen. Um, because oftentimes, you know, when somebody's telling you something and they, you know, are going through the problem, your first, your initial reaction is to try and help them. You know, you want to, you want to just kind of, this kind of came from, from a conversation, uh, that Aaron and I had earlier about unsolicited advice. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and I was like, do you know what? I think a really good weekly wisdom is just talk about listening. And this week, even more specifically, or the last two weeks, I should say, has been has been just about listening to what's happening and listening to the stories of the people that are out there protesting, the people that have been affected by the things that are happening in the world. Um, and I, it has opened kind of my eyes to a lot of the travesties that have been that have been going on, you know, underneath my nose that I don't I don't even. I didn't even know to pay attention to. Um, and I think it was really great because I had a conversation with my friend uh, yesterday and she's um, she's from Sri Lanka, but she's been living in Canada for most of her life. And, you know, in the, the whole Black Lives Matters thing, she, she was talking about her stories about, you know, being being of color and how she has always been complacent against you know people being like well where are you from no no really where are you from and and that kind of stuff and and it was really good just to sit there and listen to her talk about it and hear her stories because you know she's she's been my friend for a few years but you know you just in a way you almost take for granted that they're just your friend and they're just the person that you know and you don't think about the fact that they have you know they have these these stories to tell you because they you know they aren't white you know kind of a thing and 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 same thing even with my husband my husband is Vietnamese Chinese you know I we're in an interracial couple and and you know I just took take time to listen to what they have to tell you and I think that's really important especially right now because there's so much going on um and you trying to give advice or trying to tell somebody you know, how to, how to deal with their story, just, it doesn't work out. So just be there and listen and learn. That's good. That's, that's absolutely true. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try to fix it. Just learn. Yeah, you're right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, Mine's lame after that one. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I've been, I've been like all deep and meaningful the last, the last little while. Cause again, this, this whole, this whole situation, everything from like COVID to Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, um, to all the stuff that's, that's just going on globally has, has just kind of killed me a little bit, uh, uh, on the, in, in my heart. So, you know, I just, I want to, I'm tired of being complacent and being like, you know, trying to ignore the stuff that's happening outside my door because that just makes me ignorant and I'm tired of being ignorant. Good for you. That's great. That's really awesome. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Nathan, who's a quite the little guy, about all the stuff that's happening. You know, he had questions. And uh, he was like, that's awful. How can I protest? <laughs> I was like, oh, that's awesome. That makes me really happy. <laughs> so, okay, my weekly wisdom. You know what? I'm glad I picked the one I did. I was going to do something else, but I'm picking this one. It's another practical one. Again, so then I can, you know, you've got your really awesome means a lot stuff and I'm going to be like this is how you paint a window (laughs) so uh that's what I'm going to talk about today for my weekly wisdom so if you want to paint a window or a door that has panels in it there are three options for you my friends one is you can tape off the glass with painter's tape uh that takes a while but there's some shortcuts you can do and I'm going to let you know about it you can take um, a scraping a scraping tool, like something that you would use to scrape putty or something like that. And you can actually um, sharpen it with a file so that it's sharp on both sides. Usually it's sharp on one side. So then you lay out the painter's tape against where you need it to be. And then you hold down the sharp part and you rip it off against the edge of the window. So now you have, instead of having to like cut up with scissors or like use it, rip it, it's hard, it gets all jagged. Now you're like sharp edge. So you can do that on all four sides. And then your window's nice and taped off. You can paint it, uh, take off 
the tape before the paint dries. Um, if you need to do two coats, let the first one partially dry, do a second coat, then take the tape off. Don't let it dry. If you do do that, take a box cutter or an X-Acto knife and just like trim around it because the paint will actually like dry on the tape as well as on your window. When you take it off, it'll start peeling. It'll peel off. Um, so that's one way you can do it. That's a pretty fast way. Second way is that you can buy these little razor blades that have handles on them. And you basically, you just paint. And then after the paint dries, you scrape it off with a little razor and it comes off the glass. That one's a little more tedious, um, but that's another option. Third option, and this is my favorite option, is you paint with like a, a one inch cutting brush. You just paint close to the glass, but you don't actually paint the glass. And then you take a small brush. This is what I learned from modeling, painting models. It's like a small, not a teeny tiny brush, but a small ish brush. I'd say like maybe a quarter inch. Yeah, about that wide. And you just paint close to the glass with it. It's way easier if you have a smaller brush and just do a couple coats of that. And then that's it, you're done. So those are three ways that you can paint windows or a door with glass panes. You're welcome. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> so my way of painting windows is not to paint them. Oh yeah. <laughs> or uh, hire someone, hire someone. Exactly. To do it. Yeah. yeah. But this is why I live in a brand new build, like a, a house that was built only five years ago. So I don't have to do any of that. <laughs> no, it's true, right. It's true. I, uh, I should say, you know, there's prep work. You should make sure any old paint is scraped off, like, and clean your windows first. I wasn't doing that. So the tape wasn't sticking to anything. Right. So clean your windows, always do your prep work first. Yeah, don't just be like, Aaron said, and then just put your tape on. Just make sure your window's, like, good to paint first of all. Okay, all right. And we are moving on now to positive spin, where we take something we find mildly annoying, and we spin it around and find things that are good about it. Today, we're going to talk about acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a great topic. Um... I don't know if anybody else is going to feel this pain, but because we work at a university and an education, it's just acronym city. Acronyms yeah. everywhere. Oh my, God. <laughs> I, my first, ex okay, so my first big experience with acronyms being like annoying, I guess, is I went, I got hired to do minutes at a meeting uh, for, it was like a, something about like, I can't, it was a long time ago, but in Alberta, there's like a bunch of different groups that do things for like the, the stigma against uh, people who have AIDS and stuff like that. And they were all coming together for a meeting of something I can't remember. So um, anyway, there were so many acronyms and I hadn't really had a lot of experience at taking minutes. Oh my God. So I had tried my best to write all these acronyms down and then I had to try to figure out what they were after. And the guy who wrote the minutes was like, uh. <laughs> Like, I don't think, like, Dental Association of Alberta is actually what this is. I don't know. If that is. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, well, I need people to just actually say once at least what these things are. Like, yeah. I know you all, you all know what it is, but I don't know, you know. Yeah, and then working at the library, doing admin stuff for them, it got worse, you know, which is yeah. acronym after acronym yeah. after acronym. Oh. I remember uh, when our new president uh kind of got introduced so we had like a a big um almost like an assembly <laughs> with like every like whoever could make it uh to kind of introduce the new president and then every department kind of gave him a gift and one department gave him a scroll that was all of the acronyms and what they meant <laughs> and he unfurled it and you know when you see in like cartoons or movies where like they unfurl the scroll and it like hits the ground and just starts bouncing that's yeah, what it felt like because <laughs> <laughs> like it just felt like he was unrolling unrolling and rolling and rolling and I was like oh god it's so true <laughs> <laughs> it's true it is true. The yeah. Yeah. well and it, it's also funny because like we take for granted sometimes that everybody knows what it is and so even even like my department is the academic development center but we would shorten it to adc uh because that's a lot of words um and i just 
have this weird thing where I'm like, anybody who works at the university probably knows our department. So I just call it the ADC. And I've had so many people be like, the what now? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, the academic development center. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, right, maybe not everybody does know. Uh, <laughs> yikes. Yeah. Um, but you do, like there's there's a, a comfort that you get in where you just assume everybody knows what it means. And I had that like you, when I first got hired, was I was in my very first meeting and they were throwing out acronyms and I was like, and I I was like I don't want to I don't want to ask like I don't want to come across like I don't know anything and so I'm just like what could that mean and I just kept going through my list so I don't even think I heard most of the meetings I was like what does what does C E mean C E C E I'm like E probably stands for education what could the C stand for and I'm like oh continuing education <laughs> and then by then the mo- like the meeting was over and I was like I didn't. I didn't catch any of that. Do you know what I started doing is I would, I started taking minutes like for the library and I would just write the thing down and I would highlight it quickly. And that that means I didn't know what that acronym was. And it would just be full, like (laughs) so many, I'd say probably close to 50 for each meeting that I did of acronyms that I didn't know. And then of course, like, because I have no context, right? Like I'm taking Mm -hmm. things that I have no context and, uh, and so um, I, I eventually I kind of got some of them, but most of the time I couldn't remember any of them, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it's funny because sometimes the acronym almost turns into the name of the thing itself. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? yeah. yeah, and it's really weird how that happens. I don't know, but especially especially with the library and the university, mm-hmm. I think a lot of that where people, if you actually said the name of the thing, they'd be like, what? You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, I also, because again, there's, um, there's acronyms that are so close to another and I feel and I actually feel this way a lot about internet slang too. So like, I remember, you know, when Bay became a thing when they're like, Oh, you're my Bay. And I'm like, what the, f- what is Bay? Like, <laughs> what does that mean? And uh, I had to have my 10 year younger than me person friend explained to me what it was and I was like oh okay (laughs) what is it I think it's before all before all else or something like that I can't even remember but BAE it's before all really I had no idea that was an acronym yeah so BAE Yeah. yeah, and because that's why you like you call your significant other your bae because they're before everybody else, kind of a thing. I had no idea it meant that. Like I yeah. thought it was like a longer word that some shortened and then it became something yeah, else. No, no. Oh my god, no. that's hilarious. Yeah, and even in even in because I'm a, as a web designer, web design is filled with acronyms as well, and it's funny because um, so this is this is for any web nerds out there. There is a programming language called Ajax, which is actually a combination of um, multiple programming languages, just kind of used together. And the person who created it just thought Ajax was a really cool word. He was like, I'm going to call this Ajax. And then the the web community was like, no, 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 it has to mean something. So they now it's called asynchronous JavaScript and XML, even though XML very rarely has anything to do with it. That's so funny. No because it had, yeah, because it had to have, it had to mean something. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, and even the programming Weird. language PHP, PHP used to stand for personal homepage, but as it evolved, it didn't make any sense. So the first P in PHP stands for PHP. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh who? no! I didn't so that's like that's like. In- inception of acronyms. Yeah. Oh, acronym in the acronym. No, yeah. can't do it. This is the acronym. The acronym is in the acronym, and it's the same acronym. <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. No, no, oh. because it has to mean something. So it, yeah. it can't just be what it is. It has to mean something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So let's uh, positive spin acronyms. Yeah, it does make talking a lot easier. <laughs> I have to yeah, say, it's true. So if you know you're part of the in group that knows all the acronyms, right? Yeah. That it, it is. It's a lot. It's a lot quicker because yeah. especially in academia, everything is long. Everything yes. is long and smart and sounding. So yeah. it's way better to make them shorter. Yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, because I wish like my job title had an acronym because there's an ampersand in my job title and it's made up of four words. So like whenever I, somebody's like, what's your job title? I'm like, okay, take a breath and let's go. <laughs> um, but so there are times like, like again, in our department where the academic development center, we have the academic media group, we have the academic media lab. So everything are these like three word whatever. And so saying them long is sometimes really annoying. So I do appreciate that we can shorten them down. Yeah. And again, most people, know what it means so it's really easy to kind of kind of get there but but if you're new to it or you don't know what you're talking about man yeah you get lost pretty quick <laughs> I like when acronym is more fun than the actual word oh. you know when it ends up being like crap or you know what I mean? so yeah that's really yeah. Well, that's what I think one of my favorite uh, kind of tropes on TV is when, you know, they have something that's like, uh, uh, you know, it's like spell something out. It's like, this is our, this is our villain cohort and this is what it's called. And it's like, it ends up coming out as evil or something like that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's super fun. Agents yeah. of field, Like stuff like that. Yeah. You know, that that's super fun. I was yeah. just thinking Although sometimes, have you ever seen those acronyms where people forget that the actual word is in the acronym and they add it to the end of it? Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Safety data sheet, right? Yeah. So people will say like uh, SDS sheet. They'll say that yeah. all the time. I'm like, you're saying safety data sheet sheet. <laughs> yeah, I have that with CSS because usually you're like, oh, I'm creating a CSS sheet, but the last S and CSS a sheet. <laughs> that's so, that's so funny when you do that. Yeah. Like, no, it's it's in the acronym. Where the that's another, I guess, where the acronym itself has become the thing instead, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't associate it anymore with what it actually means. Yeah, it's the name yeah. now. It's exactly. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. yeah. that's one thing. Like when I taught when I taught web design. Um, and I would always teach HTML and CSS, and I would actually put the the letters on the board and be like, "What does this mean?" And guaranteed, almost, I almost everybody wouldn't know what it meant. They'd be like, "Oh, it's just HTML," and I'm like, "No, it actually stands for something that's really important." Because <laughs> what it stands for will it will tell you what it is, like yeah. if you know what it stands for. But uh, they're just like, "Oh, it's just HTML, right?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> Yeah, that's where it did it. That's what happens. Yeah. But uh, the other, the, I was just kind of talking about the, in pop culture and the funny thing about acronyms is if you have ever seen Brooklyn Nine-Nine, um, Captain Holt, who is probably the best character in that show, is so good about acronyms because they'll be like this, like these insanely long titles and he'll just be like, it's like, mm <laughs> like, it doesn't spell anything, doesn't make anything, but that's what he uses. He uses the acronym all the time. <laughs> the cloudy, and it, the cloudy with a chance of meatballs. The, oh, yeah, that's right. You know, when he makes yeah. the machine and it's like this huge long thing and it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are my favorite. I don't know why. I love I love acronym jokes. <laughs> See, so that's a really good thing about it is you take something super boring and the acronym is hilarious, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And again, I think it's also uh, acronyms in in uh, culture have also become their own thing, like their own language. So the idea that internet language comes from acronyms. So LOL. Right. You know, like I like I mentioned Bay before, you have mm -hmm. um B -R -B. R -O, yeah, B R B R O F L F, uh, no F L. Sorry, mm -hmm. um, and it's but it's but it's interesting because anything new, um, the older you get, the more disassociated you get with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and people speak it. They, I know they're actually saying it because I understand like if you're in a game, it's way easier just to type three letters. Like I get exactly, that. but it yeah. become a language. You're right, and then. Yeah. When I was working, I worked with summer students, and they would actually use the acronyms and in their like speaking language. Like, yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about. Do you no, just say no. a bunch of letters to me? <laughs> <laughs> the the one that always got me. So when I when I was in school, um, I had 
almost all of my friends, um, cause they were, most of them were all younger than me. Uh, cause I was in my, I was in my mid twenties and they were all like 19, 20 years old. So even just that four, three, four year difference between us, they'd be, all of them would be lol. They'd be like, you know, they'd be like, instead of just being like, ha, 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 that's funny. They'd be like, whoa. And I'm like, why don't you just laugh? <laughs> oh <my God>. That's <laughs> horrible. Whoa. Yeah. But I'm like, but if you laugh, that's the act of lol. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, I know, right? I know. Um, yeah. My kids do it all the time, actually. They'll say, they'll be like, mom, can you pass me those pancakes? Please. Yeah. Please. And I'm like, just say please. <laughs> don't, don't say PLS. <laughs> yeah. My husband and I do that just for fun. Like, cause uh, uh, we have a sign on garbage day. That's just like garbage, please. <laughs> And we do we say it like that because we want to just be stupid, right? Yeah, no, but we sure, don't mean yeah. it. Like we speak proper English. Yeah, that's the I'm worried about. Like that's the thing with uh, my kids is like I don't mind if they're doing that with their friends and stuff, but they still must know how to speak. To yeah. um, like you know like in D and D how there's all these languages, but everyone speaks common. Yeah, so, yeah. They need to, <laughs> they need to be able to speak common so that they yeah. can communicate normally with an adult. And yeah. get a job someday you know what I mean? <laughs> it's true but the people that are hiring them are going to be the one who said lol <laughs> maybe that's that true. will be common oh my yeah. goodness yeah oh, no. and it, but it's interesting so going kind of going back to that internet speak is that I cannot do it like I have never lol'd um I, I've brb'd but I've been like be right backing since like I was little because that's a very common one yeah um but yeah, like, like, I think there was, it was weird. It was like one day I was messaging my mom and she typed in LOL. And I was like, what? And I'm like, wait, I'm like, is this my, is this my stepdad or like, is my stepdad Leo? And, and he's like, oh yeah, it's totally me. And I was like, I figured as much because mom doesn't lol. Because <laughs> like, I don't, because like we full sentences, punctuation, everything is written out. Nothing is shorthand. Yeah. Yeah. I text the same way. It's true. I do use yeah. emojis though. Emojis are alright. Oh, emojis are the best. Yeah, they're totally good. Um, I do. Remember, um, it's all coming back to me now. This stuff, like uh, JK, for just kidding. Yeah. You know, JK, GG, but that means good game. So that's yeah. actually you saying goodbye because you're saying good game. But they yeah. say it in real life when there's no. Yeah. <laughs> they're not playing a game. They're just standing in front of me. Leaving the maker studio. Yeah. GG, I'm out of here. Later. <laughs> um, I'm going to call out our friend Josie, who always does JK. Yeah, she does. She does. <laughs> play. But you know what yes. her says? Actually, I enjoy it. It's really funny. It was a joke yeah. after we worked together last summer because she would say that and then I would laugh and then I would say it. Yeah. We'd both say it over and over now. So it was pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. They did make fun of me. They did say that they were going to make me say these things <laughs> I was using them in my language I was like no yeah. I will not do. like I try I try and keep up I try and keep up with just the lingo in general like I know what what it means to stand something <laughs> I know mean? what a thirst tweet means huh? a thirst tweet yeah 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 so like a stan is basically you are a fan of something like I stan Steven Universe like you're just oh, a really we talked big about this already. Yeah. You told me this, and I said, "Well, no, I mentioned ship. So ship is another one. So that's like relationship. Oh, yeah. 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 When you ship two people. Yeah. Um, but so, uh, thirst tweet, uh, which a lot of my younger and some older female friends <laughs> enjoy, is basically just when you're text. Like it came from Twitter, obviously, but now it's just like when you're texting somebody, and it just comes across like, "Oh man, that guy is so hot. Like I just want to see his butt." <laughs> And they call it a thirst tweet. Yeah, so just think about like like it's so hot you're thirsty kind of a thing. Like, you know, it's all about oh my god. <laughs> At least that's how I kind of frame it in my head to to understand it anyway. But Oh my god, that's so funny. Yeah. It's basically oh, no. just to get you uh hot and bothered. <laughs> I'm so hot bothered, I need a drink. It's a yeah. thirst tweet. Like that that's like some cockney stuff. <laughs> That's some apples and pears stuff going on there. Do you know what I mean? Where it goes from like one thing that kind of makes sense 
then another thing, then another thing until you're saying something ridiculous that makes no sense. Yeah, that's some yeah. boring right there. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So the internet is fun for all the different things that you have to learn. Um, but even I try, I try and keep up to it so I can still pretend to be hip, even though I'm not. No, not me. Not me. I do know what ghosting means, though. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well because a lot of my friends are still in their 20s like I have like a, a big friend group that are t almost 20 years younger than me which makes me really sad they're not 20 <laughs> years they're like 15 years younger than me um yeah. but whenever I'm in a conversation with them I'm just like I have to look that up later <laughs> <laughs> I'm constantly looking stuff up especially if I'm texting because I have a lot of friends that are in their 20s too from yeah. working with them right mm -hmm. and uh yeah they'll send me stuff and I'm like nope and I Google it. Oh, oh. Yeah. And then I usually like, that was lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I had to, cause like, uh, my one friend kept, keep, keep saying things are bangers. They're like, that song's a banger. And I'm just like, okay, I get, I kind of get the context because of the way he's saying it, but yeah. Isn't or like, the 80s? no, it's, it's revived. And same thing with like, it slaps. That also kind of means the same thing. Like that means it's really awesome. It slaps. No, I'm not. No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like I live in a bowl of alphabet soup, and I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I mean, that's, those aren't acronyms, but yeah, they're definitely what they're internet slang. So yeah. it all kind of comes from the same thing. Where it's like we're just trying to to shorten it down. But but that's that's our world culture. Is like we've had slang forever. Like mm -hmm. we always try and find different ways to say things that that kind of are meaningful to a certain generation and, well, and even before the internet like even, oh yeah 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 before tv like way everyone there's always that's why england's so crazy like you go <laughs> one time and things completely different than the next yeah. town they have their own slang right it's yeah. pretty crazy but even if you think about like the 1950s and things were like the bee's knees or like you know hip cats and yeah and right. all that stuff like, and some things last like yeah. the word cool yeah. the word cool has been around since like the 50s even longer I think so. I think. Yeah. yeah like a yeah. long time that's pretty pretty uh pretty great or um calling someone man or I'm just asking, <laughs> I know man you know what I mean yeah 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 that's been around since like the 70s yeah 60s yep yeah. sometimes sling sticks sling yeah. slang sticks now you've made a new one well I guess we've gone on topic about acronyms but I think we positive <laughs> Right? It does make it easier and you get whole new slang out of it. It's true. It's yeah. true. Yeah. And I and I guess it if if for me it's it's almost the sign of being comfortable with something is when you can understand a conversation completely full of acronyms and be like, I knew I figured that out hundred percent. Like I didn't have to ask. Mm. So there's like it, it's weird. It's when you especially if it's if it's work related, when you first start a job, you're like super not confident. People are using language that you don't really know. And then there's like a day where you're just like, huh, like I I remember when I didn't know what any of this means, but now it's just like second nature. And, and then you look over at the new guy across the board table yeah. and he's like, well, and you're like, I'm better than you now. Okay, well, I think that's it for this week. I think that was a pretty good podcast full of enlightening conversations and making new friends yeah i think it was great well thank you everybody who is listening all 20 of you or whatever <laughs> thank you for listening uh make sure to check out our website uh imaginaryfriends.ca you can check our instagram out where we actually have more content sometimes which is at imaginaryfriends.ca that's the handle uh, and of course, you can always subscribe to our podcast on Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, and iTunes. Yeah, and you can email us too at info at imaginaryfriends.ca. We've gotten one email, and he happened to be on the show this week. So if you email us, you never know. No, magic can happen. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. Ready, Brie? Nope. Coming out of place the way they want it to be Called imaginary friends Do you like camping or D&D? &D? How about making or Disney? If that's
That sounds good, the place you want to be is imaginary friends. Two friends who are very different and have very different views. But together, cover all the bases and give you so much more to choose. Stop on by and take a look and see And come hang out with Aaron and Bree You won't be bored, we can guarantee At Imaginary Friends That was the best.